Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, May 2nd. Wow, we have finally made it to May. Seems crazy. Where did April go for that mark? That much? Where did March go in February this year? is flying by already. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> I will go ahead and apologize for the cough. I still am fighting whatever this is that I was out from on Friday. Um, and I have a doctor's appointment midday, so I will be gone from about noon. Um, and then however long that doctor's appointment takes. But what we're looking at here is the futures. And we were green a little bit earlier and we've continued to sell off. We've, um, you know, it's just been so volatile, so crazy. Uh, but something I wanna point out here is, look at the volume that we have down here. We've really, here going up, we decreased our volume a bit. And we were a little hopeful here when we saw that, okay, we looked like maybe this was a reversal, nice volume that didn't plan out. This, okay, decent volume, trying to uh, inside candle that broke to the upside, made a new high. And then Friday, we gave every bit of it back. Our low here, in so again, this is the uh, S&P 500, not the SPY. Our low here is 4101. So we're going to watch that for our next line of resistance if we continue to move down. We're sitting right at 41.18 right now. But when we look at the SPY, remember we talk about gaps. Gaps like to be filled. I'm going to pull this Fibonacci line out. And then I'm gonna show you how to draw those Fibonaccis in and how I use them, since that's a, a question that's come up quite a bit recently. Okay, so here you can see 41 or 4.10, 64, was the previous low, the most recent previous low, we sliced right through that trend line. And um, so here, even though we closed a little bit below it, we came right back in, so I left it in. Well, now we have clearly violated that on Friday. <coughs> Excuse me. So we will look for a new trend line. But we are pushing down. There's a gap down here in the SPY at 403.38. So that's going to be our next line there. Um, we have to get through that 410 first and then down through 403. That would be the gap. Gaps like to be filled. In fact, I think um, like 90 some percent of all gaps on the SPY have been filled. They usually get filled at some point. So just keep that in mind. I don't know if all of them have been filled, but I'll tell you what, since I've been trading, they've all ended up being filled at some point. Sorry, just take a little drink there. Okay, so this is what we look like on the SPY. And how would I draw my fib lines on this? So previously, what I did was I, acoustic. Mute that. I took the previous high, right? The, so this was a good high to use. It was the break of the 200. And I pulled it down to the low of whichever candle was lowest at that point. Well, now that we've chopped a little bit, I'm gonna tighten these up and I'm going to use the low of Friday's candle, which is 411.21. Let me change the tool real quick. Gotta put on my Fibonacci tool. So it'll be 411 and I'm going to extend that up to the top of this overall move which would be the candle from the 28th, and that is a high of 429.64. So I'm not gonna be able to get this in perfectly. I'm gonna have to go in here and edit it. So 429.64, and again, I'm using the low of Friday now, because that is our low candle, which was 411.21. So I'm gonna edit that. And I have extensions just going to one side, um, because I like to have several extensions if I wanted to know how this would play to the upside, I would just flip it. Just flip the numbers when you go to edit that box. You just flip the numbers, and that will give you the upside move. Clearly, this morning, we're moving to the downside. You can see these in here. And when I flip back over to the SPY chart, they, tr they move right back over. And you can see here, we are at that 100% um, still from Friday. So hanging, hanging around the, the close. Okay. So that being said, we did hear some news out of Warren Buffett over the weekend. We know what he says can definitely move some markets. He, they uh, increased their stake in Apple. In fact, I listened to it a bit and he said that uh, 
interesting because Apple is struggling this morning um, on some other news, though, um, that uh, if the price hadn't gone back up, they, they would have added quite a bit more. So that's interesting. Another one is ATVI. They like the deal that, that was sustained with Microsoft. And um, so ATVI was another one they got into. All right. So beyond that, <clears throat> um, for today, I actually didn't set anything up yet. I do like a few of these symbols. I like Lily. Lily came back up, put in a nice little inside candle, looking to move back up above the 20 there. We're past earnings, so I like the look of that. Another drug company, Merck. Merck has reported, nice push up. Came in kind of quiet following, but look at this. I like it above this little double top area that we have here. That'll push us up, looking for a high of 91.40. This is um, interesting because there's a big old gap in here that, that was filled, but you can see that we've really now filled in that gap um, with a lot of volume. So, you know, usually you kind of shoot through a gap. Um, but we're filling that area with a lot of volume. So this 9140 is a nice target on it. Um, here we go. Car Avis budget, uh, although apparently they are going to be reporting after the bell, so never mind on that. I like the look in, uh, and a lot of the travel because we're still getting out there to travel. MNST Monster, a lot of congestion, getting ready to report here uh, later this week. But I like the look of this, just consolidating right around the point of control. Um, so I like the look of anything over Friday's candle in Monster. I actually do like Apple for a move back up above the 200. See, I have all kinds of lines on this chart and trend lines on that chart. And we'll continue to watch... Um, we have oil moving back down, um, but still in quite a chop area. This kind of interests me on this sort of W pattern that we have going on here. So I'm going to keep an eye on um, oil and, of course, political news, geopolitical, the Russia-Ukraine situation. We're seeing gold give up a lot of those gains, but again, kind of in a little chop zone watching to see if we end up moving more to a flight of safety on a, um, a more downside move in the market. I haven't really seen that though, which is really kind of interesting to me. And then lastly, things to play, just given um, off of the overall uh, move in the market, the ETFs and their inverse. So if you wanted to play the Qs to the short side, SQQQ is a great way to play that. And I'll tell you what, if you Play it off of an opening range break um, if you want to take it off like a five minute and then really watch the first half hour close, and, or not close, but the first half hour, that 30 minute area, and then the one hour. If there's no turnaround, hang in there with it. Otherwise, I would stop out quickly on it. Make sure that you use, this is too big of a candle to use for a stop. I would use that daily range as a stop. The, you know that first five minute or 15 minutes worth of price action if it starts going to the upside you can just flip that right around to the TQQQ really beaten up and hit some lows there on Friday so that's a good way to play SPXS so this is um, the SPY long oh yeah and there's the short so there's a lot that you can play. If you like the semiconductors, you can play SOX L, SOX S. And we do have in our Dropbox, we have a list of a lot of those, uh, the ETF and their inverse. So, And you can always Google them too, but they're in the Dropbox there. So, All right, that's kind of what I'll be looking at. Remember, I'll be out midday. I hope you have a fantastic day. If you have any questions, reach out. Heather C., GivingTreeTrading.com.